And today we've got another back to basics topic. This time transistor current sources. Uh, pretty simple devices but incredibly versatile and useful. Uh, as, a current source is really kind of the dual or the complement to a voltage source. You know, most people are familiar with voltage sources. You know, they can be fixed or variable. They can be positive or negative. And they, one characteristic is that they have a very low output impedance. And this could be, you know, power supplies and other fixed voltage sources. Fixed current sources can also be very useful. Again, they can be positive or negative, meaning they can source or sink current. Uh, typically, when you set them up in a circuit, they're going to be at some fixed current. Or it might be adjustable. And unlike you know, a voltage source, instead of having a very low output impedance, they have a very high output impedance. And uh, we'll talk about why that's useful. There are really many, many applications for current sources, and here's just a, a couple. Uh, you can use them to drive LEDs. As you, you set up a fixed current, you could put one or more LEDs in series, and uh, the current won't change. You can use them to charge batteries. You know, many, many battery uh, chemistries require a constant current charge. You can use them to drive sensors and things like that. And this, you know, so just a couple of examples of some end functions where you might use a current source. There are many applications in test and measurement as well. Putting a fixed current across an unknown resistor allows you to measure the voltage across that resistor and calculate the resistance value. You know, diode test that is built into a lot of DMMs typically puts a fixed current through a diode to measure the diode voltage. You may have bridge drivers for measuring sensors and other things like that. And uh, other, you know, these current sources are also just basic building blocks that you'll find uh, in many different circuits. Uh, bias circuits, particularly inside of uh, integrated circuits, current sources are used extensively. Also as active loads, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well, can uh, help provide a tremendous amount of gain in some very simple circuits. And even uh, you've seen in some of the circuits that I've built, using a constant current source to charge or discharge a capacitor can make a linear voltage change over time. So these linear voltage ramps can be used, you know, as part of, you know, sweep generators and, you know, other circuits and things like that. So lots and lots of applications uh, for transistor current sources. So let's take a look at them. Now current sources can be built from many different circuits, op amps and all kinds of active circuitry, but I want to keep this back to basics topic simple and focus primarily on transistor current sources. So there's a number of different uh, configurations and we'll just cover a few of these here first before we go experiment with them on the bench. So here's kind of the simplest uh, you know, form here, or one of the simplest forms. Uh, just set up a fixed bias on the base of this transistor, which sets up a fixed voltage across this emitter resistor, thus setting up a fixed current in the collector. So this is a current sink that is basically constant as long as the supply voltage doesn't change. Now if you replace this resistor with a pair of diodes, you know, what will happen now is that the voltage at this point will basically be the same voltage at this point since the voltage drop across this diode is going to be about the same as the base emitter drop. So that means I'm going to have essentially one diode dr voltage drop across this resistor. And that won't change much even if the power supply changes. So this configuration is a little more immune to power supply variation. Now here's a real simple configuration with a simple JFET. Uh, with a JFET, when the gate is directly shorted to the source, uh, the current flowing through the FET is essentially the maximum operating current for that JFET. It's called IDSS. And that's going to typically be larger than you probably want to use in a circuit. So if you want to reduce that current, you simply can put a resistor in series here and connect the gate down here. So now what happens as uh, a voltage is applied, uh, the current will start to flow. And as that current flows, it creates a voltage drop here, which increases you know, the negative bias of the gate with respect to the source, thereby reducing the current. So by selecting a resistor here, you can set up a fixed current. Just simple two components, and it makes a nice current source. Uh, you don't see this as often in, in circuitry because the gate uh, threshold voltage is not as well controlled in a JFET as things like the base emitter voltages on a bipolar transistor, but that works just fine. A couple of other uh, forms of uh, current sources that you might see is uh, this simple form here. And uh, really what this is is just a resistor and a diode-connected transistor. And if these two transistors are matched, 
then the current flowing here will equal the current flowing there. Uh, but if they're not matched, then you can get a difference in current. Uh, you'll often sometimes see a configuration like this. Uh, and this is where, you know, this, this tends to help to improve the output impedance a little bit, but it's just another configuration you'd see. And of course, all of these configurations can be done, you know, to create current sources that push current out, you know, just by using, you know, PNP devices or a P-channel fed or something like that. I mentioned at the beginning, one of the key attributes of a current source is that it has a high output impedance. And let me show you what I mean by that. So if you looked at, say, the voltage versus current characteristic of a resistor, you know, and you plotted it out, it would basically just be a straight line. It would intersect with zero, so zero volt, zero current, and then as the voltage increases, the current increases. And that ratio, that, that slope of the line, it will essentially tell you what that resistor value is, right? In this case, high value resistors are going to have a very shallow sh slope and the low value resistors are going to have a very steep slope and uh, basically it just obeys Ohm's law, very simple. Current sources on the other hand are going to look more like this where the current is going to remain nearly constant, ideally it would be perfectly constant but usually nearly constant versus voltage change and this can be re really useful in a number of different circuits again LED drivers other things like that but that's what we mean when we say it has a high output impedance that the output current changes very very little even with very large voltage changes so let's go take a look at this on the bench and see how it all works so I've got a couple different current sources uh, put together on the breadboard here so let's take a look at what I've got so I've got the, this very simple circuit here just a 20k resistor, 2.2k to set up a bias voltage on the transistor here. That sets up a fixed voltage across this emitter resistor and we get our current sink out there. I also have a JFET uh, current source set up here. Just a simple J310 N channel JFET. 4.7k resistor in this configuration here. Both of these are very simple fixed current sources. In order to test them out, I'm using this configuration here. Well, I've got a 10 volt supply that I'm using that's just fixed that is going to be biasing this string up here. And it's also biasing up or connected right up here to this uh, test configuration. What I have is a variable uh, power supply, a floating power supply, that I can vary the voltage from you know, 0 to about 10 volts. And I've got a 470 ohm resistor around that. And what that's going to ensure is that the power supply is always sourcing current. Okay, regardless of how much current is going out this way. So uh, it just keeps the power supply happy. So that's just essentially going to allow me to change the voltage that appears as the load for the current source. Then I've got an ammeter to measure the value of the current source. And I have my, my old Simpson uh, VOM here to measure the voltage that's essentially at the load. So the idea is that we're just going to connect up this thing to uh, the current source that we're testing and I'll vary this voltage here and we'll watch and we'll watch what the voltage is at the output of the current source and what the current is. And again, ideally as we adjust this voltage up or down, we'll see that voltage change here, but we should see very little current change for that voltage change. So let's go take a look at that. Alrighty, so this uh, multimeter over here is reading the current in the current source. The volt ohmmeter is reading the voltage uh, that I'm going to essentially apply as a load to the current source. And then I just have another multimeter over here so I can show you uh, making a couple of measurements. So in the case of this uh, first current source here, let's just measure a couple of quick voltages here. Uh, the supply voltage uh, we can see is uh, just about just over 10 volts or right at 10 volts. If I measure the voltage at the base of the transistor, okay, that's reading just about one volt. So we're going to have about six tenths of a volt drop across the base emitter. So that leaves us you know, about 380, you know, 384 millivolts across the 1K resistor. All right. So if we take a look at the uh, the instruments here, we can see that this uh, the current in this current source is about 419 microamps. And that's with the output of the current source uh, driven to 10 volts. So that really means that I've got this power supply dialed to basically zero. So we're, we see essentially 10 volts 
at the uh, collector of this current source. And uh, so we can see that on the meter here. There's our 10 volt reading and there's our current. Now if I change the power supply here, uh, we, can change, we can watch that the voltage change at the output of the current source here and watch how much the uh, current source changes. So if I reduce the voltage at the output of the current source down to say 5 volts, okay, it's right about there, okay, we drop the current source from 419 to about 393 microamps. Didn't change very much for a 5 volt change in the, uh, the bias, if you will, that appears at the output of the current source. Let's drop this down even more. Let's drop it, uh, drop it down to about 2 volts. Okay, so now I've only got 2 volts appearing across the output of the current source. And we're running at about 377 microamps. So let's calculate the output impedance from those numbers. All right, we know we can calculate the output impedance by calculating the slope of the line. In this case, the line is going to be very shallow, but I've got the numbers to calculate that slope. So if we take a look at it, the equation is simply going to be, you know, 10 volts minus 2 volts, or 8 volts, divided by the change in current, which would be 419 microamps uh, minus 377 microamps. Okay, let's run the numbers. So we had an 8 volt change. And the current change was 419 microamps uh, minus 377 microamps. And we divide those two. And that gives us an output impedance of uh, a little over 190,000 ohms. Now, uh, if you think about this current source being a load in a uh, simple amplifier, like a transistor amplifier, where the gain is normally you know, GM times the load resistance, or RC, if you had GM times 190,000 ohms, you can get a tremendous amount of gain out of that amplifier by using a current source as the load, or an active load, as opposed to a simple resistive load. Let's take a look now at the JFET version of the current source. So I'll hook up my, my test load circuit here to uh, the JFET. Let's move that over here. And uh, we can see that uh, this is giving me uh, about 573 microamps. At, uh, at a 10 volts at the output of that uh, current source. Now one thing I want to take a quick look at is how much voltage uh, is dropped across this 4.7K resistor because uh, that will tell me how far down I can drive this output pin before running into problems. So let's take a quick look at that voltage here. I'll just go measure across this resistor. And I can see I've got about 2.4 volts across uh, that resistor so I don't want to bring uh, the drain voltage uh, down near that so let's make some measurements and watch how far down we go. So with 10 volts applied at the output of that current source I can see I've got about 573 uh, microamps of current. Let's uh, bring that voltage down to say well let's go say 4 volts right here so I just dropped the that voltage now from 10 to 4 so a 6 volt change and we can see now that the current is 533 microamps. So let's calculate uh, the output impedance of this current source. Okay, so that was a uh, 6 volt change, and I went from 573 microamps to 500, and looks like right now it's 534 microamps. And let's divide those. And that gives me an output impedance of about 153, about 154 k ohms. So not quite as good as the bipolar current source, but still pretty respectable. There's now one of the configurations uh, we talked about at the very beginning was this simple configuration here. And another name for this one is a, a current mirror. And what I mean by that is that if you think about the current that's flowing down through this collector, if these two transistors are matched, that's going to be the same current flowing here, so that's essentially mirroring that current. So uh, we can use current mirrors to do some interesting things, like turn currents around. What I mean by that is we can turn a current source into a current sink, and vice versa. So here's a you know again a couple of examples of that current mirror, right? Current coming in here, that current gets mirrored, you know here as well. If we turn that around with uh, PMP devices instead, it could be a configuration like this where I've got, I pull a current uh, down through this uh, diode-connected transistor here, and that's going to create the same current flowing in this transistor here, provided these two transistors are matched. Now, on integrated circuits, the transistors match very, very well, and this is done all the time. 
Uh, another configuration for that would be something like uh, a whole string of current sources to bias up a number of different circuits, maybe do a number of LEDs or something like that, and this is a pretty common configuration. We uh, essentially have a resistor that uh, feeds down with an emitter follower to drive this node here, which drives the bases of all these transistors. So this particular transistor and this resistor sets up a current here, and if these transistors are the same, uh, and the resistors are the same, the current that's flowing in this collector will be the same current that's flowing in here, 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 and so on. You can also use this to change you know, the um, resistors that are appearing in the emitters and have different currents. Maybe I'll have twice the current flowing here or half the current flowing here. A very common thing, very, very easy to do. So let's go take a look at a simple current mirror and see how, uh, how it works here on the bench. So I've got this simple PNP configuration uh, set up right here. So I'm going to move my test load and uh, actually completely take it off here for the moment. I will take the uh, input to this current mirror and take it from the output of my first current source. All right, and now if I connect up my test load here to the output of that current mirror, we can see that the current has changed direction. It's now minus 400 microamps instead of plus 400 microamps before. And again, if I change the voltage that's appearing there, we're seeing we get about that same kind of change that we were looking at earlier. But now, of course, we're seeing the output impedance of these PMP devices, so that's going to be different well as well. And so the last thing we'll do is uh, take a look at how this you know, current sink that I turned now into a current source can be used to drive a couple of LEDs. So I'm going to take my test load off of here. And I've got a couple of LEDs uh, sitting here. And if I take one LED connected from the output, I can see that LED uh, lit up here. Okay. And uh, so, and you can see kind of the brightness of that. Now, if I uh, move that LED over here and put another LED in series, and we'll go from the output of the current source to that. Now, both these LEDs are in series. Now, both of those are lit up. All right. If I take that one and kind of move it over a little bit and take a third LED, stick that in series with that again. Okay, Now I've got all three of those LEDs lit up and they're all essentially the same brightness. You know, If you put three LEDs in series with a resistor like you, like you typically do when hooking up LEDs, you'd have to change that resistor value each time because the voltage drop across it would change. Uh, by having a current source, the current source doesn't change, so I can keep adding LEDs until I run into essentially the compliance voltage limit for that current source, until in this case we saturated the transistor. So I hope this Back to Basics video gave you a, a fundamental idea of what transistor current sources are, some of the basic ways that they can be used, and what some of the configurations are, and how to actually go build a couple of trans uh, simple transistor current sources and test them out. Uh, thanks again for watching, and comments are always welcome.